on both of them, right. but he's a coda, meaning that he's a child of deaf adults. So his parents are both deaf. So each of us have very different perspectives. Keith is now going to share some stories with you about a few of his experiences growing up as a coda, from a coda perspective. Hi. He's right, he was just talking about being a coda. That means child of deaf adults. And I'm very proud of that. My parents were both deaf, and I'm very proud of that. Growing up in the deaf world, but at the same time, I was growing up in a hearing world. Looking at the deaf and hearing worlds, they often came into conflict. So I had to kind of develop this new world, and that new world was called Coda World. And it's a mischievous world. <laughs> now all Codas will tell you that one time in our lives, when we're very young, when I was very young, I would look at my parents and think, they weren't really deaf. They're lying to me. They're really hearing. <laughs> I know it. My big paranoia and fear was that when I became 18 and ready to leave, go out into the world, my parents would pull me back and say, hold on a second. My mom would become like God, you know, with a great big book of life, <laughs> haul it out, and say, all right then, and start leafing through it saying, you said this bad word 17,000 times. <laughs> and I'm hearing. <laughs> so when I was growing up, that's one thing that I'd do, is I would test them to find out if they were really hearing. One time, my mom was busy vacuuming, and I saw her doing that, and crept over following the cord to the plug in the wall. And I pulled it out. My mom stopped vacuuming and looked at me and said, stop it, you're gonna get in trouble. Don't play with electricity, you bad boy. Go to your room. I was like, I was stupid. I didn't realize that when she was vacuuming, she'd be feeling the vibrations of it. <laughs> you're hearing, how did you know? How did you know? <laughs> As I ran off to my room. Later that week, I went to school and met this older Coda and said, you know, are her parents really hearing or deaf? And this older Coda said, they're really hearing. <laughs> and you know how you can find out? No, how? I'm completely oblivious. Sign one thing, but use your voice and say the other. So I sign and voice two different things. Cool. So I got home that afternoon, and my mom said, go clean up your room. So I signed, yes, but now, no. What did you say? Yes, no. Get to your room, you are so rude. Are you trying to take advantage of me because I'm a deaf person? Go into your room. Shit. Oops. So I really learned my lesson. When I'm talking with my parents around, I always cover my mouth. <laughs> to my room and on my way I saw something. My mom had these wires going down into her shirt. I said, what are those wires from your ears down to your shirt? What is that? Oh, me? oh nothing. Nothing at all. Just so if I can hear if there's a plane going overhead or you know, somebody's you know, got a chainsaw going to cut down a tree. I think. So if you're wearing hearing aids, that means you can hear me. That's not fair. So really, you might think these days with all this improved technology for the deaf, you might think that's a great thing, right? My mom has these hearing aids, but now they're getting smaller and smaller, so you can't even see them anymore inside those ears. You're not sure if people are wearing hearing aids or not. But with all these great improvements in deaf technology, deaf, deaf technology, you might think this is great because it's equal access for deaf people, right? But I hate deaf technology. I'm against it. You know why? It's not equal access. It's equal punishment. My mom busted me so often, I hated that. So when I was growing up in the 70s, I liked to watch TV, right? And there weren't any captions. So in the 70s, they had a couple of things that were captioned. But I'd be watching this movie, there was a movie called 48 Hours, you know, 
with Eddie Murphy, lots of swearing in that movie. So it's an R-rated movie. So I was watching it, and I'd be cracking up and having a great time. My mom came in and said, huh, hey, what's so funny? What's he saying? So I said, oh, well, um, he said the word nerd. You know, that's English. In English, that's really funny. English, the word nerd is really funny? Huh. So I can't, I don't see it on his lips. I'm having a hard time catching it. Well, sorry, Mom. Oh, that's okay. My mom wandered off to the next door neighbors who were also deaf, and they had a decoder. She brought it home, and she said, hi, great. She hooked all the wires up to the TV, and I said, hey, Mom, uh, what's that? Oh, well, so when I watch this movie, captions will print along the bottom of the screen. So you're going to see all the words along the bottom of the screen? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, this way. Let me, hold on just a second. I'm going to get the popcorn. Don't start the movie yet. So we're sitting there on the couch together. And first the previews start, you know. And I'm looking at my mom. I said, hey, mom, um, I have to go save the world or something. <laughs> so I would take off. I took off. My mom said, okay, fine. And so the movie starts and the captions come on. And I heard my mother scream seven blocks away. She sounded like Godzilla, but really I called her Momzilla. And I'm like those, uh, I'm hiding in the corner, quivering. You know, now you ASL students, have you learned any square words yet? Better pay attention now. So I'm hovering in the corner, quivering, scared to death. And my mom can't be So that night, I lied for the first, well, maybe the fourth time in my life. <laughs> my mom and dad relied on me. If somebody knocked on the door, I was to tell them. I would point. If, somebody, if the phone rang, I would point. I kind of felt like a dog, you know, like an Irish setter or something. <laughs> so that night, when my mom was ready to slap me, I said, hey, mom, mom, there's somebody knocking at the door. A what? to my dad. Hurry up, somebody's knocking on the door. Oh, there's somebody knocking at the door? So he folded up his paper and put it down, put his shoes away, and my mom quickly started cleaning up. Go on, get the door, hurry up. And she was straightening up. My father asked if she was ready, and opened the door, ready to say hello. And my parents looked out, and looked down one way of the street and down the other. Hmm, what's going on? And my answer was, well, I think maybe Jehovah's Witnesses selling books? I don't know. They got tired of waiting and left? My mom looked at me and said, I don't care. And she started to, and then the phone started ringing. I told her, the phone's ringing, the phone's ringing. My mom said, oh, oh, the phone's ringing? So she put on the TTY and started typing away. Hello, GA. I think my son lied to me again. You will. So the next day, <laughs> my mom said, now, you know, there's a, an 800 hotline for CODAs that I can call. So when a person knocks on the door, there's going to be a light that flashes. If the phone rings, there's going to be a light that flashes. So I said, oh, lights the flash? So that means my mom didn't buy just 60 white light bulbs. You know those really big, you know those helicopters have the big spotlights so they can find the per person trying to escape? My mom bought that kind of light for the phone. So it would blind me. Every time the phone would ring, you couldn't see where the phone was all of a sudden. <laughs> Same thing with the, with the whole house, really. If somebody rang the doorbell, the whole light. And the next door neighbor's house would all black out because so much electricity was going on. going on with those weird deaf people. And you know, NASA would set up these rockets, and they could see my house when they were circling the Earth. The, the astronauts would say, wow, that must be a deaf house down there. And you know, those hearing kids often get into trouble. 
about knocking on the door and then running away. You know, it's a game they play, like they run the doorbell and run, run away. Well, my house wasn't a problem. Because remember I was talking about, uh, you know that story in the Bible about Lot's wife? Well, these two kids came up to my life and said, come on, let's go knock on the door, okay? Or ring the bell. So they went up, rang the bell, this light came on. And the kid was stuck. He just couldn't move. So again, I really am against technology for the deaf. Really against it. It really ruined deaf culture. Because it used to be, at deaf pizza night, ASL students could go and they'd start learning how to sign, right? So you'd get there and you'd be real scared, eyes all wide. Hi. And deaf people go, oh yeah, hi. What's your name? My name, he, <laughs> oh, well, nice to meet you. And then the next day, the student would go back to their college class and the teacher said, so what did you learn? I learned tree and fish and vagina, thinking that was pizza. Pizza, yeah, you know, like you eat it like that. students go to deaf pizza night and it's ruined. Because the ASL student gets there and all the deaf people are busy talking on their pagers. <laughs> and the student will come up and say, hi, my name is, yeah, hold on. Hello, my name is, yeah, yeah, hang on. And then the next day, the student will go back to class and the teacher said, so what did you learn? This? <laughs> The, the operator system where there's a hearing person who calls to this operator who will then type into a TTY to a deaf person who can then read what the, deaf, the operator typed and then type back a response and then the operator would read what the deaf person was typing so the hearing person could know what, what the deaf person was saying. Well, I hate that. I wish that in my time we had the pagers, but we didn't. So when my friends, when we had to go to my friend's house, I had to call, if I was at a friend's house and I had to call my mom, I would have to call an operator and they have to talk really slowly. And my friend's family's staring at me while I'm calling my friend. Am I calling my mom? Hi, mom. <laughs> the operator's typing really slow. Krom's mom says, you have to pick <laughs> me up because I'm The root of all evil. <laughs> and they want you to pay for the damage. <laughs> so sometimes when I'm at home, my own home, my hearing friend will call me and my mom would answer the phone with the TTY. And my friend would say, hey, is Keith there? And she would sign wait and then my mom would come and tell me and Hey, Keith, come get the phone. So I would come out. And most of the time, I'd pick the telephone off the TTY and speak. But once in a while, I'd be really mischievous. My mom would sit down, and I'd start typing away, Hi, Keith's not here. And you smell like a fart. <laughs> and the operator has to say everything you type. <laughs> you smell like a fart. And then my friend would hear this. Okay, and the type operator would type in okay. I would think that was so funny. And then I would type in, and you have to do Keith's homework, and you smell like a fart, and you like to kiss girls over and over and over again. Ha, 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 ha. And the operator's reading this off, and my friend's going, what? Not realizing, and she didn't realize that the boy was crying. And his mom took the phone, and I'm still typing fart, 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 fart. And the mother's hearing this and said, Mrs. Ron. That is, that is not appropriate. And then all of a sudden I realized, oh, it's his mother, shit. <laughs> I'm coming over there right now to see you in person. So I tried to turn all the electricity in the entire house off. And my mom was like, what's going on? Oh, the president, Carter, he said the Russians are coming to bomb us and so we have to turn all the lights out. <laughs> You know, like 
I said, I was always very mischievous. And my mom would sometimes have to rely on me to interpret for her. So one time when I was in fourth grade, the teacher was there, I was here, my mom was there. And the teacher said, your son is a very bad boy. He never does his homework and he gets into fights all the time. So I signed, she says that I'm good. <laughs> and I get, I'm getting A's in everything. So my mom looked at me with this big grin on my face, looked at the teacher who had this very angry look on her face and said, my mother said to the teacher, I think you and I just need to write notes back and forth. <laughs> so from that day on, I learned the meaning of facial expressions. <laughs> so the second time my mom let me interpret for her, she wanted to go to Weight Watchers, to a Weight Watchers meeting. You know, it was a fad in the 70s. So my mom got there and my mom said, okay, you stand up at the front. It's like, all right, fine, I was young, I was, you know. So I'd listen to her, and I didn't understand the words calories and carbohydrates, whatever. <laughs> so my mom was sitting there, so what is she saying? What is she saying? Well, she said that you're fat. <laughs> you have to stop eating. <laughs> and your friend's fat, too. <laughs> but the last time I ever interpreted for my mom, I was 16 years old. And my mom is a very devout Christian, very regular churchgoer. So she went to a revival. So she said, would you please interpret for me? And I was like, yeah, fine, whatever. So I got up there, standing on stage. And the preacher was there reading from the Bible, <laughs> preaching away. And I'm full of attitude standing there. My mom said, so what's he saying? He says, you are not going to heaven. You are going to hell. And he said, you have the devil in you. The preacher suddenly looks over at me signing, and I'm like this, talking about the devil. And then said, oh, yes, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. My mom said, get off the stage. You suck. My mom booed me off the stage. 